didn't take long for me to figure out printmaking, especially under the tutelage of a Scott Schneff, yet he and all universities seem to teach the two or three centuries of printmaking traditionally uh, had, but none of those methods, even if they dealt with color and things like that, really dealt with the colors I needed. As a fisherman, I wanted to do fish. I was doing everything else well, but my fish colors weren't quite right. And so I went into months, if not longer, of experimental uh, printmaking processes. And in a sense, I took the uh, you know, stone lithography from the Germans, uh, woodblock printing from the Japanese, silk screening from the Chinese, the uh, intaglio etching from the Italians, and I mixed them all together like a, a crazy recipe and actually did everything completely opposite of what you're supposed to do and made it work. And uh, what I created was something I call copper block etching. I created a better way of printing, and I've been trying to use this better way of printing in the last 15 years to my advantage. It has some limitations as so far as detail is concerned, but it is very strong on sea creatures, kind of simple things, crabs and starfish and uh, blobses and fish. And so on this semi-simple form, I can create a very beautiful copper block etching and focusing on the technique as a lead, turn that effort into a career. Uh, not to be an artist, but just to make the most out of this invention of printmaking. I'm treating a copper plate more like a woodblock by, first of all, cutting the plate out of just ordinary copper and then incising a topography into the plate by the use of using acids. It's not really acids, it's a ferric chloride, so a, a, a environmentally safer product to uh, erode copper like an etch. And so I'm um, covering parts of the plate with a waxy type of tar called asphaltum and timing it in this bath of acid back and forth to give my plate a topographical sense. Instead of just incising lines into it, I'm building different plateaus, hills and valleys into the plate in a, in a three-dimensional sculptural form. And into that topography, I'm mixing ink. And instead of just uh, using colors separately, I'm separating the colors by viscosity. In other words, adding oil to some colors and taking oils away from others. Normally, but not all the time, greasy ink goes in lower sections and dry inks are either rolled or pressed on higher surfaces. And then under the pr pressure of the printing press, the greasy ink kind of comes through the dry ink and forms their own colors. So a bit of the mixing is going on under the pressure of the press with these different viscosities of inks being pushed around by different pressures. I don't only have to cut plates out though. There are more complicated finer art scenes that I do by just etching into a flat copper plate or plates and uh, separating the image so it can be inked with different colors. Uh, this is a classic example of my copper block etching technique where I took the time and skill levels to cut these things out and you, you tell how long the uh, perimeter or the uh, border of this thing is and when you're cutting copper out with these band saws there are no mistakes to be made. There's no erasing, there's no fixing things. You have to do it exactly right and the more complicated shapes like this is a good, good example of me doing my job right. So the plate is cut out, a topography is etched to it and then into that topography inks of different viscosities are being pushed into the lower surfaces. This is just part of the process. We'll be buffing certain sections of this off and rolling different viscosities of inks on different levels at different heights. One print per time. It's a pain in the neck, I'll tell you. But um, uh, there's ways of cheating, but I just don't do it. This pr print is completely loaded up. Sometimes there's multiple plates and multiple reasons to run it through the press, but I think this is gonna, it's going to go through just once. So we kind of just lay it down nice and flat without having anything shift. We pull this out from the antennas. We lay a pre-soaked damp piece of paper on it. There's a right side and a wrong side to it. And I think there's a speck. Hang on a second. <laughs> Laying a pre-soaked piece of paper on top of the whole image. Positioning it to the press. There's three felts that go on top of the whole thing to cushion the copper and press the paper deep into the recesses of the contoured plate. They got to be set up in such a fashion that they get accepted into the rollers. I'm just going to start this a little bit.
and this just squeezes everything together really, really hard. And now the ink is being pushed onto the paper by the pressure of this press. And we'll see results soon. I'm just going to peek at it, see if it's enough. Seems fine. I'm going to spin this around so the camera can see it as it comes up. And here's a reverse image of a beautiful blue lobster called Good Luck. Good luck on the market. I put the eyes in afterwards. It takes a couple of days to dry. We trim the sides, we sign it, we addition number it, and put it in museum quality fittings and frames and send it to the best galleries in the country, including Valerie's Gallery in Newburyport. Isn't that a beaut? Good luck, lobster. Who would eat a blue lobster? No one why is good luck. How's that? Nice job there. Yeah. Yeah. And another nice glow in the tail there, so good print. And this is the reverse side of the paper when it went through the press, just to show the seriousness of the pressure going through. So there it is. Well, I invented the technique to produce a better fish skin. And so the first four, five, six years was producing trouts and codfish and striped bass and bluefish and just many, many species that I was familiar with. And that was just fine. And then the comet Haikataki came through the sky. It was hard not to notice that. And so I changed my technique to kind of uh, capture the beauty of that night sky. That was a very successful series of prints. And then the next following year was the comet Hale-Bopp. And so I put a tremendous amount of effort, I think 18 images with Hale-Bopp in it. And that whole thing, you know, fitting a production schedule with current events certainly worked. I did real well during the comet Hale-Bopp when I was printing things and getting out on the market as the comet was still flying through the sky. I am aware of the digital age and how just about any particular drawing that I do, a painting can be turned into something digital, even manipulated to be even better, given to G. Clay or posted people and, you know, 10,000 can be made and, you know, with modern marketing techniques and distribution techniques, I could spread this image around the world, but it wouldn't be a fine craft look. Printing, I've been at it for over 20 years. I'm never bored out of it. It's always a challenge to get it right. And it's something magical about putting my heart and soul into the craft that gets interpreted as craft bundled with art when the final product of mine shows up. It's just not a picture of a bird or a crab or a starfish. It's the positive feeling of the handcraft presenting itself over all other things. And the imagery is less than that. And so I believe I connect with people by the honesty of my work and the honesty of them viewing it.